As we all know, the universe is mostly comprised of delicate balances that keep it stable and within working condition. For example, an excess of neutrons within atoms would bar any simpler elements like hydrogen from being able to be created. These balances allow us to have the diverse and complex systems that we depend on to survive. Yet this balance is disturbed in one of the most interesting places, the asymmetry between matter and antimatter. First of all, what is antimatter? Antimatter is essentially the polar opposite of matter, with opposite values and properties such as electric charge. However, antimatter also possesses mass. Antimatter and matter are not compatible. Any contact between the two will result in total annihilation of the matter. To give an idea on how dangerous antimatter is, a gram of antimatter connecting with a gram of matter will result in an explosion larger than the one caused by the Fat Man atomic bomb. Fortunately for us, antimatter is not prevalent in the universe. If antimatter was to be equal to matter, the universe would have become empty space mere milliseconds after the Big Bang. Clearly, as matter dominates the observable universe, that is not the case. But how antimatter became inferior in quantity is puzzling in every way possible. So how did the antimatter-to-matter -matter asymmetry that allowed our existence happen? Firstly, it is easy to say that antimatter and matter are equal. It is only that antimatter is in its own part of the universe. However, if they are in separate parts of the universe, at some point there must be high-scale collisions, since antimatter-to-matter -matter annihilation releases energy from the destructed particles. However, there have been no energy fluctuations at such a large scale detected in the trench lines between antimatter and matter. A more widely accepted theory is that during the Big Bang, certain otherwise separate laws of physics were unified, and thus are not what we know today. With these unpredictable reactions, it is very possible that matter was produced in larger quantity than antimatter. This would set the stage for asymmetry. This theory, however, is next to impossible to prove. Theories for the solving of the baryon asymmetry are and can never be set in stone, as the physics of the past are too winded and peculiar for us now to prove successfully. However, just like the other problems we have had, it has helped us reach new heights in our understanding of the delicate balances of the universe.